Toward the beginning of the year, I did an interview with CrowdSec on the Pseudo Show podcast. Specifically, this was episode 42. Thinking back to that, I wanted to explain at a high level how you can get started with it. If you're not familiar with CrowdSec, it helps you mitigate against hacking attempts by blocking IPs in a similar manner to felt ban. CrowdSec, though, is a modern take on this type of solution. And from my experience with both fail to ban and my very recent experience with CrowdSec, I also think CrowdSec's easier to configure and get going. CrowdSec and fail to ban are similar in the fact that they both block IPs based on behavior they see in your logs and they meet and that meets certain criteria. For example, someone could try to log in several times unsuccessfully with different usernames or even the same username from the same IP address and then be blocked. So both solutions can be used to update your firewall rules to block those IP addresses. And instead of just keeping a local database like Fildeban does, with CrowdSec, you also utilize CrowdSec's database of known bad IPs that have been sourced by other users in the community. The more people that adopt CrowdSec, the better the data that is in CrowdSec's database. However, IPs don't stay malicious forever. So the database is updated when those IPs that are known to be used by bad actors are no longer being used by them. The two main pieces of software for CrowdSec that you need to use to get started is the CrowdSec agent, which is actually made up of two components, and the CrowdSec bouncer. The CrowdSec agent ingests your logs. An example would be monitoring your Apache logs, and then this would utilize the CrowdSec parser and a CrowdSec scenario. A parser is just a configuration file that allows you to specify in YAML how a string in a log should be parsed. A scenario allows you to define a potential event based on those logs parsed. So there are scenarios available now for log4j attacks or just a classic SSH brute force attack, and many others can be found on CrowdSec Hub. A link is provided down below. When CrowdSec detects IPs showing unwanted behavior in the logs based on the scenario that you define, it routes the data to the local API, which then sends the new IPs to the public CrowdSec database and to your local database. And after the local database is updated, it could send a notification, and then it will also pass the data to the bouncers you are using. Now, bouncers connect to uh, say, for example, your local IP tables instance or various platforms, including IPsec and many others to update rules to reject IPs that are showing bad behavior in your logs. If there's a particular solution you use, check out CrowdSec Hub for the current bouncers available. If there isn't one, you can either write your own or utilize the custom bouncer plugin, which allows you to pass CrowdSec data as arguments into a script. Make sure to go to sudo.show slash store and pick up a sudo show hoodie and feel smart while you write your custom CrowdSec bouncer and support the show while you're at it. CrowdSec ships standalone binaries, Debian and RPM packages, and OCI compliant container images for solutions like Kubernetes. Instructions on how to get going with your preferred program. Instructions on how to get going with your preferred platform will be linked down below. 
Once you get the package installed and the service started, you are done. As you can see here, the CrowdSec agent is running and the IP tables bouncer is also running. CrowdSec is pre-configured and, and running already and helping me mitigate against attacks. I didn't do anything to configure this when I set this up. It is already watching the SSH and Apache logs and blocking bad actors from breaking into this system, utilizing data pulled from logs and the CrowdSec database. CrowdSec has such a low barrier to entry and should be part of any security strategy. But like any technology, make sure you understand it before you implement it. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit subscribe because more Pseudo Show Labs content is coming along with updates to the podcast. Make sure to go listen to the two interviews on the Pseudo Show podcast with CrowdSec. The last one, like I said, was earlier this year, episode 42. And the first one we did, which was actually one of our first interviews in episode 14.